Jameis has had a, a sketchy past, man. He's been in trouble with the laws a lot over his over his career. And he is uh, now currently, he, he's facing allegations of groping an Uber driver back in 2016. And now the NFL has decided to suspend him for three games in this upcoming football season because of that incident. Is the NFL overreacting to an allegation or is Jameis Winston just out of damn control? So, so this is a hard one for me, and I'm gonna read a statement first. Cause you, James, I, cause, cause you a Jameis guy. You I, I am James. This, I'm extremely high. Still support Jameis. Thought he did a phenomenal job on the show, um, on the Hard Knocks Tampa Bay ver, uh, edition. Yeah. Uh, he released this statement. I'm gonna read the statement to its entirety. For, uh, first and foremost, I like to say I'm sorry to the Uber driver for the position I put you in, Winston wrote. It is uncharacteristic of me, and I genuinely apologize. In the past two and a half years, my life has been filled with experiences, opportunities, and events that have helped me grow, mature, and learn, including the fact that I have eliminated alcohol from my life. I know I have, a, I, know I have to hold myself to a higher standard and on and off the field and that I have responsibility to my family, community, and teammates to live above the platform with which God has blessed me. I apologize to my teammates, the Buccaneers organization, and fans for letting them down and for not being able to be out there for the first three games of the season. Although I am disappointed in the NFL's decision, I understand the NFL process, and I embrace this as an opportunity to take advantage of the resources available to help me achieve the goals that I have for myself. So that's the statement that Jameis released um, after he was suspended for three games. It is said that um, he negotiated this down to three games. Um, you see NFL commentators, the most famous one being ESPN NFL commentators, the most famous being Damian Woody, blast Jameis for his, for his comments. And, um, you know, Michelle Beadle has always been another one that has disapproved of, of Jameis Winston even being on NFL team. So much so that Damian Woody, getting back to him, basically said um, he would cut Jameis Winston. Yeah. Um, here, here's the problem that I have with this. And, and this is a very touchy topic because, again, I like Jameis. He's from the state of Alabama. Um, I think he's had some transgressions. He's only 24, so they're saying that this happened two and a half years ago. He was a 21, 22-year-old young man that has been placed in a position that he's learning. Yeah. I understand how hard it is to be a young black man in a situation where you've been given so much, and now you have to essentially learn on the go. I do not just, if this occurred, which it sounds like he's admitted to it, right? Uh, by apologizing to the young lady, um, I do not, that is unacceptable. Uh, where I have a problem with is he is going to be suspended and he's going to do his time for, for the allegations. I don't like the Damian Wood is getting on television and blasting this young man for first and foremost, I, I we all can agree that what he did is not is, is unacceptable. Okay. But he is going to be suspended. He's going to do his time. But I don't remember this type of outrage when Ben Roethlisberger, who also was a former Super Bowl winner, who is a who is a Super Bowl winning quarterback, and was essentially suspended six games. For, for allegations of, uh, let me pull this up because I want to, I want to, I want to say the right thing. Uh, ben Roethlisberger was suspended for uh, by the NFL uh, for violating the NFL personal conduct policy. The the league announced uh, down to but uh, blah blah blah. Accused him of sexually assaulting a. 20-year-old college student, a Georgia college student in a nightclub, 
in March of 2010. And so the problem that I have with this entire thing is how um, Jameis was wrong if he if he did this. He is wrong. He's he's admitted to it. But let's treat him the same way we treated Ben Ben Rollinsberger, who was uh, suspended for six games by the NFL for violating conduct policy. And so don't get on, use your platform. Now that you have a platform, you have the ability to speak out and to, uh, to, to voice your opinion and attack this young brother for something that he should not have done and be so vocal with it. And that's the problem that I have with it. The problem that I have with it is you get these people that are holier than now that treat the young players and say they would cut. Now, would you cut Ben Roethlisberger? If you say, no, what? Damien Woody said he, he had did. a zero tolerance. <laughs> he did. He said, I have a zero tolerance. He did. That's what he said. He did. So if you have a zero tolerance, the same way you say you're going to uh, cut Jameis Winston, you need to use that same platform and say that you would have cut Ben Rollinsberger. Yeah. And that's the question that I would pose. The there. man got asked the question. He was up there giving his analysis, and they asked him a question if he was. But he kept going on and on he and did. on. He did. And this is, so Damon Woody, Damon Woody, is a what two time? I think he's two time Super Bowl champion with the New England Patriots, so forth and so on. Twelve years in the NFL, so he's been in the league. So he, and he knows the ins and outs. In these situations, where as a black man, you've got this young, this young kid, this black kid that has come up through the ranks. He has had these instances of being in trouble in on, in, in different ways, stealing crab legs and yelling out profanities in a public place, all of these things. At some point, you got to enforce some tough love. Like, man, go sit your ass down somewhere. No, 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 BG. And they asked first him, off, if you, no, the, if, you the, if, you first general, off, if you the general manager, if you the general manager, and you got somebody that you leaning on, you paying all this money, and it looked like that they're going to continue with this pattern of being a detriment to your program from a from a promotional standpoint, and who knows how these legal instances affect his performance on the field because last year wasn't that great for him. So if you're an owner and you got this guy that seems like he that's, refuses. That's a false, that's a false he, statement, He too. refused. That was actually one of his best years last year. It, okay, so how are, how are quarterbacks ultimately graded? How are quarterbacks? Where, where, wins and losses. Okay, wins and losses. Quarterbacks are ultimately graded by wins and losses. Did they win or did they lose more times than none? No, they, they finished the season well. He doesn't have a lot of support around him. Okay. I actually think that this is the year where you can judge, truly judge him on uh, where he is as a player. Right. Here's the problem that I have, though. Yeah. The problem that – crab legs, the rape allegation, mm-hmm. allega- allegation that – that's mm-hmm. college. Mm-hmm. He's a college student. Mm-hmm. He's in the NFL. Mm-hmm. 22 years old, mm-hmm. had a transgression, mm-hmm. it, admitted to it. Obviously, he admitted to it to the NFL. He's going to serve his time. Mm-hmm. Ben Rollinsberger, ten, uh, eight years ago, was suspended six games, Super Bowl winning quarterback. The point that I'm making is, is Damian Woody has an a opportunity to reach out to this young man, talk to this young man, mentor this young man, but don't get up here and and chastise and belittle this young man for something that he has taken ownership with. He was wrong. He admits to being wrong. I do not condone it. I do not condone his actions. Yeah. But I'm not going to get on this platform and belittle this young man. Now, that's the last chance he get. He done. So after this, he's in the NFL. After this, if we see a transgression, then so you would cut him after if he do one more thing. So if it don't happen now, if he do it again, then you would cut him. At FSU, it was an allegation that was that was that they said he didn't do. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't count. He he admitted to this. Yeah. 
you everybody gets a gets a, a one 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 more chance in my book. Okay. We forgive him. Yeah. Um even even the great Nick Saban gives players a second opportunity. He's welcomed plenty of players from other schools an opportunity. And that's the society we live in. So the guy gets a second opportunity. Don't get up here and be holier than thou and say you got zero tolerance. The question that I would pose to Damian Woody is would you, since you have a zero tolerance, would you cut Ben Roethlisberger? And that'd be a good question to ask him. Ben. And I will. I will chop this video yeah. up, and, and I will post and, this video, and I will send it to him yeah. for him to respond. Because in all fairness, he went at, he would ask the question specifically about Jameis Winston. And, you know, that quarterback position is a scrutinized position. Because so much is expected of you. Not only on the field, but they want you to be a certain type of leader. They want you to be a certain type of personality, a figure that people can rally around and like because you're the face of the brand. I think the second chance thing is subjective. And different owners are going to respond to this a different way. Luckily for him, his real ownership for Tampa Bay is not taking the Damian Woody approach. But I don't think it was a situation he was trying to be holier than thou versus it being a situation of looking at, well, how many chances do you need? How many times you have to be in trouble to know that there are certain places, certain things that you should not do? You're in the Uber, man. At what point is it okay to, to, to get a cue of groping an Uber driver? Because he admitted to it. Now, what got to happen for you to grope an Uber driver? No, I agree. It's it's out of it's absolutely wrong. He was drunk. He he shouldn't have been drinking, and he did something that he shouldn't have, he should not have done. And I don't think he was trying to say he holier than thou. But that's how to me it comes off as um, the Damian Woody situation to me comes off as somebody that is he's been there. He. Mm. He knows the ropes, and it's more like he pointing the finger versus trying to help the young man. To that me. Could be, I mean, that could be that could be true because we see that all the time. We see that all the time. We see that all the time. So it it could very well be that I don't know his track record. This was really my first time having any knowledge of who who he is on this level. So I don't know what type of dude he is. But I got to honestly say, like, James, come on, man, like. We, no, I agree. We root, I, but, that, but, we but look at this though. We talking about yeah, but we two. But this is two and a half years ago now. Have we seen any transgression? See this, this and this is something else you got to put into perspective. This is 2018. Yeah. This happened in 2016. This is two and a half years ago, and I have not heard of any transgression since this since this incident. So to treat this as though this happened yesterday, I don't think that's fair to the young man. Perhaps he's changed and he's grown. But let's start from, from this point and let's see what he does. And if he continues to respond in the way yeah. that we that, that some believe he that he is, then then I'll then I'll revisit this topic. But for now, it's not right. Yeah. Uh, but we want to we want to crucify the young man for for some of his transgressions, and and I think Charlemagne even said this in this day and age, uh, Malcolm Little would never become y'all would never let Malcolm Little become Malcolm X, because y'all are not willing to forgive people for transgressions and for things that they've done. You've done things at 22 mm -hmm. that you probably regret, mm -hmm. and. Let's not let's not walk around here holier than that. Hopefully, we won't be looking at this and James do something else, and we gotta say, "Oh well, this is just him being a twenty-six year old. He got to make it to thirty before he get good sense." Hopefully, I'm a, I'm a James, I'm a James supporter. We know, yeah, obviously, yeah. I root. Well, that's not what my intent was, but I'm a James supporter. If anybody that listens to the show know the young man, I have no problem talking to the young man and mentoring the young man because I want him to succeed. I hope he succeeds, and I I hope for the best for the young man. That me, so. that me too out here. Me too ain't nothing to be played with. So I'm wondering, and, if, mm -hmm. that, I'm wondering if that 
that allegation was brought out because of this this Me Too climate that we have. Absolutely, absolutely. This Me Too got something. To do. And, and and for another topic, not today, but I want to visit as a topic. Uh, Me Too and, you know, the effects of Me Too, particularly around when they get involved. So let's let's uh, use this as an example. If Bill Cosby had passed away two, three years ago, uh, prior to the Me Too movement getting involved into everything that was going on, what would his legacy have been? And so I guess the whole point is, is, you know, with the role that the Me Too movement is playing today, there's a chance that legacies are being wiped shifted yeah. and wiped out uh, because of this movement. So uh, I'll leave it at that. And I want to visit that one day. Yeah, and that, that's a good point because it is, it is out there. And what once would be like a time cut off, if if it happened 20, 30 years ago, we ain't really paying attention. Them days is over. It don't matter how long ago it was. It's still as relevant now as it was back then. And now people are gaining courage. It's gaining leverage. And people are now feeling free if they were violated to speak about it. You just got Terry Crews coming out. He went to, to, to a Senate hearing the other day advocating for... This survivors bill, survivor sexual assault survivors bill of rights, and he gave his testimony in front of the Senate about the 2016 incident that he had. Well, he was at a party, and one of the executives in in the film and in TV industry grabbed his genitals twice. So, you know, this thing and his wife was, was and his wife was, was there. there, and he was placed in the dilemma. His thing was how he was in this dilemma at that stage in his. I guess career, you got this executive, do you watch this dude? Do you get into a physical altercation, get into a fight, you go to jail, you get blackballed in the industry, or do you use restraint in the moment of this violation? You know, and he's this big guy, this big line, former linebacker, probably could have did some major damage to the guy that violated him, but he was put in this, in this situation, and so that was just an example for it, but People got to control themselves, man. We it, it, with these these sexual tendencies and, and this power merging them together, people just out of control. So we do need to have that talk, and hopefully, this whole Jameis thing will will resolve itself on both ends. Both parties involved will get the the justice that they they rightfully deserve, and we don't have to have no more conversations about Jameis groping nobody, stealing nothing cussing nobody out or whatever else that, that's out there that could cause a young and, brother and, and let me And let me be clear. I am not in no way condoning the actions of Jameis Winston. I think that he admitted to, uh, he essentially admitted and apologized to the young lady. Uh, perhaps the young lady has a civil case and if she wants to pursue a civil case against Jameis Winston, um, by all means she has that right um, so she is a victim. She does not deserve that type of treatment. So I want to be clear. I'm so glad, uh, you, I'm glad you did that. Oh, I'm going to be hundred percent, but I do want to say, I didn't like the, the response from Damian Woody and, and how he, how they addressed, um, uh, uh, James. 